All right, guys, quick run down right here. We got our 04 Mustang GT right here. Uh, car does not run, uh, so I got a good idea what's wrong with it now. But when I got it, the plenum was kicked off to the right, unbolted, vacuum lines, air line. I mean, vacuum lines, wiring harnesses, cold air intake was in the back seat, alternator was in the front seat. All the alternator bracket bolts were missing, water pump bolts. There was only one factory one in there. They looked like there was one from those hardware right here. This one right here was broke. I was going to show you a video on how to get that out, but whenever I pulled the water pump off, it was just enough for me to get a pair of needle nose vice scripts in there. So after I got the bolts in, I pieced all this back together to make sure we had a full engine, full car, rather. Yeah, you know, got to get a battery for it. Um, because the battery is dead, alternator belt, thermostat's not in there. But other than that, we can at least got a good starting point when we can start taking this right here apart. Uh, it does have custom exhaust. I know it's got an X pipe on there. Uh, appears to be uh, cat, uh, cats from, uh, I guess, American Muscle CJ Pony Parts, that bullet looking style. Uh, he said it was a loudmouth exhaust. Don't know. Uh, not really crawling underneath there and look yet. But. Uh, Anyway, to the problem of the car, what I think the problem is, so I pulled all the plugs uh, out to do a compression test, and I ran my bore scope down in all eight cylinders, and there is coolant in all eight cylinders. So I done a compression test, and cylinder number two failed, so we either got a cracked head, cracked block, or a blown head gasket. But anyway, let's tear this beast apart and see what we find. All right, we're going to start out by taking it. Now, you got to take your belt off, of course. Um, uh, like I said, I don't have a belt, so uh, for it yet. But anyway, we're going to start by taking our alternator off. We got there out the way. Now, this right here is already loose because, like I said, when I got the car, everything was already loose anyway, so I just pieced it on here so we'd have a good starting point. And plug, plug the alternator plug that harness all right for your alternator bracket it's gonna be a 10 millimeter bottom bolts are gonna be a 10 millimeter also just loosen them up And this should lift straight up. I'm going to take it right off the bracket. All right, next, we're going to unplug our idle air control valve, harness, throttle position sensor, harness. Go ahead and remove these hoses here. Kick it there off to the side. Unplug this vacuum line right here. Well, it's better if you got something you can use a flathead or something to help break that seal a little bit. But I'm having to hold the camera here. All right, next, you're going to want to take your cold air intake off and remove it right there. Kick it off to the side. Let's see. Go ahead and unplug our water temp sensor said I was going to. There we go. Unplug right. that. One and one sixteenth should fit this. Oh. <sighs> All right. <laughs> if uh, this won't break loose easy for you, just uh, grab you a hammer and pop it. Should come right loose. five bolts hold the plenum onto the intake it's one two three four five take him right there off all right got a vacuum line right here you take off which feels like it needs to be replaced I don't look like it take much for it to crack take it there off and this plenum should come up. Yep. 
Uh, vacuum one. Can't believe I forgot that. All right, now we should be able to lay this here off to the side, just like that. I'm gonna move that over just a little bit more. Take this, I'm gonna to unplug it. Take this bracket here off. Right, I'm gonna unplug the harness that goes to the fuel rail and the vacuum line right here as well. Unplug that one. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna unplug this one here too. That way we can move all the vacuum lines over to the passenger side and get them out of the way. All right, we're gonna connect our uh, fuel line from our fuel rail. My fingers are froze. It's only 40 degrees out here. There we are. All right, you're gonna grab a tool that's gonna fit. Disconnect line tool. Place it in there. All right, I've got it separated. Uh, so you just basically take your tool, press it in this way, and it should release. And if you have to, push in on the hose to get it to start to release, then pull back. All right, next, you're gonna wanna unplug your injectors and your ignition coils. Just pinch the injector on the side and pull it. A little tab underneath on the Ignition cool, just pull, pinch that tab, pull it, and do that <coughs> on both sides. That's a 10 millimeter, by the way. And this should just pop right out. I said should. Yeah, like so. Ooh, that right there came apart. We may get new injectors. We'll pop it there back in there. All right, after you unbolt the, unbolt the fuel rail on this side, yeah, it'll just come pick it up. It'll be a line that goes across there. It'll come straight out. All right, there's a bracket right here, and it covers the back uh, bolt for the intake and you cannot get in there and take that intake out unless you remove this bracket the bolt is on the back side of it and it is a 13 millimeter it's probably gonna be slow going getting it out especially this crap here in a way that i refuse i'm trying to avoid unplugging i think i got it loose enough i can get my fingers maybe There's that break. All right, we got this hose uh, going from the heater core to the intake. We gotta take that tear off. For the intake, your uh, thermostat housing. We'll start with that. All right, we got all the bolts out, and this intake should, unless I forgot something, should come straight like that, straight out. I said earlier in the video I was going to just set the plenum off to the side, but it's going to be in the way. I don't know why I thought I could do it with it in the way, so I'm just going to go ahead and take it off. I'm going to unhook our spring from the cables.
like so. If we come here, we'll pull this cable here out, just slide it out. Just like that. And then here, you just want to lift up like that. And that'll separate your planting. All right, now I'm just gonna start removing this harness here. Just unplugging stuff, getting it all out of the way. Just pull straight up, that's all you gotta do. back here, run this through, get it there out of the way. Get it there and plug out the way. Got your screwdriver in there, pry out on that clip right there. Now, move this here off to the side. There we are, get it down below back. Go ahead and finish disconnecting our heater core hose. See these two white tabs right here, one on each side. Just press them in. And, well, one's broke actually. Is that sucker? Let me look. That right there already broke off. <laughs> wow. Push in as hard as you can. Get that. All right. Just press. Now there's one on each side. But if you notice, that one's broke. So you just basically push in on it. You push in on this hose right here. Press these two tabs right here in and pull out on the hose. There's a rubber seal that's stuck on. I'm just gonna leave it there for now. That'll remind me to get a new one. You gotta disconnect it here. This bolt right here, it's a 10 millimeter. Take off our power steering pump reservoir. It's a 10 millimeter. I mean, I'm sorry, half inch. Put it to the side somewhere. Use a zip tie or whatever you gotta use to tie this off somewhere. Get your power steering pump off. And there's this uh, bracket right here uh, that helps hold the uh, hydraulic line in place. So in order to get to this bolt behind here, you're gonna have to take this bracket here off. That is an eight millimeter. four bolts holding this power steering pump on and the one I'm doing now he will not get it out until it comes off of the power steering pump there you are you drop this here out the way good news is you ain't gonna worry about losing this bolt right here unless you take the line off we're gonna take the uh, AC compressor off Unbolt it. That should also, that should be a 13 millimeters way, I think. There we 
here it comes. And now we can pull that right there out. We'll just let that AC compressor rest right there on the sway bar. It snaps in there. There we are. With them clips. And it just goes down in them slots right there. So you just basically grab it. It's already loose. Grab it and you just pull straight out like that. And be mindful of your cigarette lighter plug. Unplug it. Maybe. There we are. Kick it there off to the side. Right, these are four bolts. Hold this plate on or eight millimeter. Get on there. If I mention these are 10 millimeter. It should break away like so. You can pull this plate here up. Do a little maneuvering to get it to come out. So we got these four bolts right here. They're half inch. Gonna unplug our oxygen sensors. I see it up. Looks melted. I've seen all kinds of problems with this car so far. The more I take apart, the more shit I find wrong with it. Next, we are going to unbolt this sucker right here. And on the other side, and we're going to remove the X pipe, get it out the way. Now, everybody's exhaust is going to be different. Mine's a 15 millimeter. Y'all's may be different. Who knows? And I'll take this, go ahead and loosen this side over here. Now, I don't know if y'all can see it or not, all I'm gonna do is pull straight back. Use my foot to help hold it. There we are. All right, we're gonna drain our transmission fluid. That's a three H drive for the drain plug. Just slide it in there. Look at there. We got no more problems to fix. Pinion seal leaking. Alright, we're gonna drop the dry shaft. And this is a 12 millimeter. Uh this is probably gonna be a son of a gun. Godzilla, ain't gonna break it. Alright, so we're gonna grab another wrench for some leverage. See if I can get this to break loose. Oh, there we are. 
forgot to mention, I got a paint mark right here. That's so we can line our dry shaft back up the way it came off. Use another wrench for leverage. Break this in here loose. Let the break off and then uh, spin this right here around. Take your hammer and just knock it loose. And it'll drop down just like that. Then all you gotta do is just pull out. Make sure you got a pan there to catch any uh, fluid that may come out, cause fluid can come out right here. Even after you drain it, you just pull out on the dry shaft until your shaft clears. All right, next, you're gonna wanna take your cover off that goes for you, uh, where your clutch cable and your fork sits. So we can release your clutch cable. It appears to be a 3 8 I could be wrong. My buddy said he had a new clutch put in this thing. All right, to release your clutch cable, you're gonna wanna take a pry bar, stick in there, and pull back on it just enough to push out, get the let pressure off of it. It can be a pain in the butt sometimes. There we are. Just like that. Sorry about the camera shaking. It blinded the shit out of me. Good God. That's where I... All right. All right, you wanna remove this retaining clip right here? So just pull out. Just like so. I can't feel my fingers. They're so numb right now. Frozen. Alright, we'll remove the down pipe. And that is, appears to be a 15 millimeter, just like the rest of the exhaust so far. That side was already loose. I mean, is there anything tight? I, just, I mean, I can tell by the way it feels whether it's loose or tight. I mean, so far there's not a lot that's been tightened down on this dang car. And as far as I know, I think he did use the same guy to do all of his work. All right, for this passenger side down pipe, I don't know if you can see that up in there. Uh, hopefully you can. Got the socket on there. You're going to come on this side of the downpipe, on the right side of it, with a couple long extensions to get this off. And that's about the only way I see to do it. So a little helpful hand on that. starter it's 13 millimeter There's a third one. I don't know if y'all even seen that or not. If you did, I'm sorry. I will tell you this.
This starter is a pain in the ass. Next, we're gonna pull, start pulling the bolts out. Holds transmission in, 13 millimeter, just like the starter. Another one. All right, you got three on this side, up there. All right, you got two here on the bottom. Alright, last two bolts to make the transmission to the engine is these two right here. Now you can get in behind the intake if you've not took the intake off and uh, get a wrench behind it and you can use another wrench up here for leverage to break them loose. I've already done that. Alright, we got our transmission jack underneath here supporting the transmission. These uh, cross uh, transmission, this cross member is uh, 13 millimeter. You got two on this side and two over on the other side. We're gonna take them right there off. There we are. I didn't quite have it in a neutral spot, but I was close enough. I'm gonna jack it up just a little bit. Probably should have moved this bar right here, I bet. But it made life a little easier. Yep, that's me getting lazy. All right, we're gonna take our 15 millimeter and pull these bolts out and pull this K member bar out. Yep, yeah, that's what was holding the transmission back. I'm gonna go over and do the other side. Right, now let's pull this transmission on back. There we are, we cleared it now. Slide it on back a little bit more, just like that. And that's where I'm gonna keep at for now while we pull the engine out. All right, next we're gonna remove our ground that goes from the frame to the block and the uh, negative cable. Goes from the battery to the block. It's gonna be a 15 millimeter. All right, this nut right here, you need to take off. That's a 16 millimeter also, I mean a 15 millimeter. That's a 15 millimeter. And that's the bracket that holds your uh, cable that goes to the starter on. Take that off. Then we'll be ready to break the nuts loose on the motor mount and pull the engine out. All right, you got one bolt on the motor mount on the back side. It's a 13 millimeter. In case I didn't mention these were 15 millimeter. All right, we got them two there out. So this one here is free. Go to the other side. All right. We should have everything free so we can get the motor out.
manhandling this and doing it base. You know what? I think it's time for me to build a shop. The hell with this outside stuff. So, uh, that's it for me. I'm gonna get this sucker inside and the next video we will start tearing this thing down. Thanks for watching.